memory and uh, storage are no longer scarce resources so stop spending too much time uh, worrying about them unless you have a justified reason to do so so try to do as many operations in memory and try to store your state to storage uh, as necessary for uh, sake of writing stateless applications so don't try to over optimize unless you are working uh, under memory and storage constraints which might become a case on embedded devices or iot devices so there it is a part of requirements unless memory and storage uh, is not a part of requirements you can be a little generous about them uh, because uh, over optimizing can lead to a suboptimal code for no reason so just don't try to uh, prioritize them unless it is necessary ideally you should be using data types which are uh, fitting your use case perfectly so if you are running a short loop only for let's say 100 elements then a short data type uh, for that particular variable will do but this is not true in all the languages where you will have this fine uh, finer nuance so uh, just be judicious about using the smallest possible data type let's put it that way so this is more of an optional thing because uh, from a pers performance perspective sometimes it is recommended to use the default int everywhere and let the compiler optimize the stuff which is also uh, possible in certain languages only. So just try to understand the uh, data type system of your language and use it judiciously. But definitely don't uh, go for the overkill like using long everywhere. So be judicious with your data types and it can help you in saving certain space. In certain scenarios, you might be advised to recompute simple things instead of trying to store them. So uh, if you are taking, uh, let's say, a logical operation or uh, of two values, uh, then it doesn't make sense to store it in another integer. You might as well just recalculate it because the uh, bitwise operations are much faster. So instead of trying to access that memory, recomputing uh, things in the cache will be much faster. So uh, this was a very low level example. Even at a higher level, you can uh, assume that if you are holding a lot of information in memory, instead of uh, trying to just uh, make another query call to the cache, then also you are uh, kind of not using the resources optimally. So you can just rerun a query and get certain information instead of trying to store it uh, and trying to come up with some kind of a unoptimized cache in your application. Returning to the information hiding or the abstraction aspect of uh, programming practices, hide complex data types in private fields because exposing them to the end users will cause a lot of confusion. So always have users access them through uh, different APIs without actually knowing how the complex data type internally is defined and getting used. From a general application perspective, uh, you are advice to store data in text format or something like JSON compared to binary formats because the uh, compaction and the other uh, parsing details of binary formats can get complicated. So you have to write dedicated parsers and you have to write compatibility uh, interfaces for other systems to interact with your binary format. So in general, if you are working with applications, start with text as your default way of storing information when performance and other things become critical that's when binary formats can become justified and you can use them so if unless you are writing a database kind of a system using binary formats is just not justified so uh, work with json work with uh, text-based formats which are easy to parse and which the other systems can adapt to easily so if you are using json any other language using a json parser can read your data so that is the kind of interoperability that you should be aiming for